Hey guys, I wasn't actually planning on posting a video today. Um, I haven't been feeling particularly creative lately um, and so I really had nothing to show you but then um, I was doing a little bit of a tidy up uh, and I found a couple of Traveler's Notebook inserts that miraculously I finished um, and so I thought I would do a quick little walkthrough of both of them. Um, these are both inserts that I've made myself. Um, this one is stitched, this one is stapled. I will leave the link to my um, how to make a traveler's notebook insert without a long um, stapler video up here um, but otherwise they're so easy to make your own inserts guys just follow the video you can see how easy it is um, I'm gonna start with this one because I think it's the oldest one I can't even remember making this insert um, I did use a whole bunch of crepe paper stuff to actually make the insert um, and then it just kind of sat on my desk for a really long time um, like a really long time it might even be more than a year I would think uh, and so it's got a whole range of sort of miscellaneous photos in it the last half of which I've been kind of um, doing pages over on my Patreon channel with my patrons using a bunch of different sort of challenges um, just that I could finally get this one finished and put away. So the insert itself is made up of alternating pages between pattern paper uh, and just white cardstock. Um, these are all double-sided papers, so each spread has like a pattern paper and a white side, um, which makes it super easy for putting pages together. Um, I find it really helpful to have some sort of pattern paper on there, just because it's less intimidating than like a fully white spread, but that does bring with its own challenges of trying to coordinate what you're going to do with the actual page itself, especially if you're not using a kit or a full collection like I have with this one. So if I remember correctly, and this is a really long time ago, uh, I think this was a cut file from Citrus Twist, which I actually um, used my silhouette and the pen tool to draw it with pencil you can see there and then I just watercolored it and I really loved the effect um, and I had great plans to do this again and I never have but seeing it now I really love how this turned out and it's a fun way to be able to just use your cut files a little bit more so other than just as a cut file it's a great way to um, create something that you can then paint with. And the pencil is a really good option. Actually, one second. I totally lied. I have done this again. This is a cut file from Paige Evans. Um, and I did the same thing. The pencil's really light on this one. Uh, but I just um, drew this cut file a couple of times and me and Shane sat down one afternoon and had a bunch of fun just playing around with some paint and um, yeah I cut mine out of the paper just with scissors not with my silhouette um, and that was a really a fun sort of project to do I have no idea what I'm going to use this for it is just sitting on, on my wall but there you go I did use this um, technique more than once I think these, I don't even remember, I think these are um, stamps from Kelly Stamps possibly um, and I just used a gold doily in here to add a little bit more colour but the bit that I cut off the side I added underneath the photo to kind of tie the two pages together. I think that's the, the key when you're using um, this sort of pattern on one side and white on the other is to find some way to tie those two pages together. Um, and this page I did that with sequins so I have glued some little sequins on this side here this is actually a four by six photo that I cut um, and did manage to cut without chopping anybody's face off um, and then there's a few more little sequins on this side so that's I think um, it, it's one one way of like tying these sorts of spreads together is by adding some sort of element that goes on both sides This is another page that I can't remember even taking the photo of. This has to be more than a year old because I did not take that this spring. So um, 
we might be looking at 2018 when I started this insert. Um, but I used some of these Willow Lane stamps uh, underneath to create my own sort of second pattern on this side. And I've just tied these two pages together by mixing the colours. So I took the pink from this side and added that onto here with my doily and my photo. And you can see my like joining element on this spread is the washi tape on both sides. So it's a blue and pink and a little bit of washi just makes one sort of cohesive spread. There we go, <laughs> definitely 2018 now. Um, my sister's baby shower photos. Um, so one of the pages in here, I did insert the um, sort of gold foiled vellum between the white and the pattern. Um, and I, I think on both sides, I haven't used it as like an insert piece. I have just uh, added a digital 3x4 card to mount my photo on. And I actually have glued behind that card to sort of glue it down. So you can lift the vellum there, but it is actually attached to the page. I've added a little bit of gold in, uh, just some gold thread in behind here. And then again, I've got the same linking element. I've used the same stamp on both sides of this page. I think these are super old uh, Studio Calico stamps. So I'm well into my stash for this one. Um, and that was sort of where I stopped. <laughs> so that must have been where I stopped in 2018. Um, and then it sat there for most of 2019. Um, and I just sort of started getting back into it with my patrons. So this was one spread that I did. There's a tiny bit of mixed media on here. This is a Tim Holtz stamp and some Nuvo embellishment mousse. Pink on pink on pink with lots of teal and pretty stickers from one of the crepe paper sticker books. Uh, just a random photo of my desk, but again, I've got that linking element despite there not being any white on this. This is the one spread of the whole book that doesn't have that white page on there. Um, and I really love how this one turned out. The sort of advantage of using those sticker books is it is super flat too. Um, I've got a few little enamel -y pieces in here, but um, everything has stayed really flat. So this is that other page with the vellum, and again, I've done the same thing. The vellum is just adhered behind the two photos. Um, this was another process video for my Patreon page, uh, and this time I've got sort of the same sequence linking both sides. Um, I had experimented with using uh, glue dots behind the sequins uh, which I really loved. I had made a little sheet of sequins so they were pretty stark ready to go. Um, I coordinated with them with the page and that way it was just quick. I just boom 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 stuck them on there and I really love how that worked. So the immediacy of the glue dots is a real advantage in that one and I have used that same um, I think it was Willow Lane stamp again. I really love it. It's a beautiful stamp, a great way to add sort of, this is more embellishment rather than pattern, um, but it's really pretty stamp. This was another, I think this was a recipe challenge I did with my patrons. Um, and the sort of linking element on this one is this really cute, I think it's an Echo Park stencil that my gorgeous friend Alice sent me. Uh, and I did another little bit of mixed media in here. This is just some uh, modeling paste that I mixed with some green ink. The challenge was to use a color you didn't enjoy that much. Green, of course. Um, and I love how that kind of just spills over onto the other page and ties everything all together. This was a super simple page. I was like trying desperately hard. This was the last page I did in this spread, um, in this book, sorry. Um, just trying to use it all up basically. I picked some washi tapes that coordinated with the pattern paper um, and just laid them onto the white page. So there's only a tiny sneak of the white down here. Um, I used a super old iPhone photo for this one where I stamped directly on there with um, the Heidi Swap Honey and Spice Alpha stamp that I love so much. And again, I've got that same connecting element on both sides of the page, which is the gold washi. 
And the last page in this book was the first page that I did this year. Um, this was another recipe challenge for the patrons, and it's a, a little bit neutral for me, isn't it? Um, this was using a lot of stickers and elements from one of the Pink Paisley sticker books, which again, I really love. Um, plus using this sort of combined element, joining element of the hexagon, so that ties my two little pages together. And that's it. The beauty of making your own notebooks like this is you can make them to whatever size you want, really. Um, I kind of don't love getting my notebooks too thick because it makes it really hard to film any sort of process videos when you're working with a spread that's sort of half up and down. And so when I make my own, um, own notebooks like this, I can make them just a few pages long, two, three, four, five. I got sort of 10, 12 spreads in a notebook is perfect for me. So my second little notebook here is a bit different. There's no, um, the only pattern paper on here is on the front cover. And this time I used the We Are Memory Keepers binding tool to stitch my notebook shut, um, which I do really love, especially when you're getting a little bit fatter like this one. It does keep things together a bit more than the staples do. Everything in here is just white cardstock. I just use something that's sort of maybe... 120, 160 GSM paper. I don't like it too thick, but I do like it thick enough that it's not um, not too ghosting when I'm stamping um, behind these pages. So this one was a quick one, only a couple of months this year. But again, I make my notebooks, you know, relatively small so that they don't last that long. This was a video for Citrus Twist. I'm pretty sure there's a process video on my challenge for this one. I still love this little note, um, sort of post-it note stamp. So cute. I turned the stamp, the digital version of the stamp, into a little cut file to frame my photo with. Love how this one turned out. And this was a bit of a redo page from um, my patrons. I did a challenge way back in February to use up a collection. Um, no, it wasn't a collection. It was a sort of stash kit, a giant stash kit that I had made. And one of the videos on there I did was a Troubles Notebook page, which I didn't love, didn't love at all. In fact, I, yeah, I really did not enjoy it. So, um... I gave up in the end and redid it. I wanted to prove to myself that I could make the initial idea work um, and it was just a few sort of things that had gone wrong. So this is the redo version of that and I am so much happier with how this page turned out. Um, no doubt because of this cute little face here. This was another fun page to do. I had this really cute photo of Jack watching Real Housewives. Um, me and my sister both are addicted to that show and it's good to see that he is as well. He can join our little club. Um, I had a whole bunch of carousel ephemera to use um, that I had bought because I had the paper pad and nothing else to go with it. So I got an ephemera pack um, and I just wanted to use a few of those bits and pieces in here. And I love how bright and colourful this page turned out. Um, my stamping was a little bit... Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit questionable, um, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. This was a super, super quick page that I put together, um, I think back in March, maybe at the start of April, uh, for a cut file, a freebie cut file. So I will link that video up here as well. There are a few different cut files um, included there, and this was one of them, the Together one, which I cut out of the cardstock. I think I had used the add-on kit from Citrus Twist with a whole bunch of the stamp market stuff. Um, and I just love it, again, with that tiny face. Uh, this was a page I had done during one of my Patreon live streams. Again, I've used this little, it's a bit hard to see here, isn't it? This confetti stencil, one of my favorite things, definitely. Um, and that same Nouveau embellishment mousse. I love that sort of subtle pink shine it gives it. And a whole bunch of all heart stuff, which is still one of my most loved collections. I had it like a restock of it that I hadn't actually used at all. So it was fun to play with some of those girly colors again. 
Uh, this is the this sort of companion page to uh, the other cut file. This is another one of the cut files here, Be Kind. So again, that's linked back there. Um, and some of the Hey Hello collection, which again is a new favorite. Love it. Love how bright and pink it is. Um, and it just worked so perfectly with um, some super kind messages from my group here. And um, it was a really quick and easy page to put together. So there is definitely a process video for this one on my channel. Again, this is another um, Patreon kind of challenge video that I did. I love how this one turned out. I've been playing with a lot of foil this month. Um, if you saw my favorites video, I had mentioned the spread in here as well. I just, I love how this turned out. It's one of those ones I hadn't actually planned a lot, but the grid of tags just worked out so perfectly and I was super happy about that. Uh, over on the page Evan's Happy Scrappy Place, um, this was one of the challenges for National Scrapbooking Day. So um, my challenge was put a rainbow on it, of course. Um, I chopped up a paper from Bloom Street and rearranged all these little diamonds into rainbow order. And there is definitely a process video for this one up here as well. And the last and bulkiest page in this notebook, um, there's definitely a process video on here. I love this page so much. I love how it turned out. I love all the little elements in it. So many different flip ups in here, sequins, coffee, um, and all of these good stamp market stuff. I love it. Definitely a process video for that one. I will link that up here too. My favorite page in the whole book. And that's it. That's two little notebooks down. I think it's time for me to go and make another one. And that is always a super easy thing to do when I'm not feeling particularly creative. Getting prepped for those times when I am. Um, I hope you guys are all doing really well, staying safe and staying sane, um, doing the best that you can. Let me know what you've been up to down below, especially if it hasn't been in the way of craftiness. I totally get you. Can't be crafty all the time. Sometimes you just have to cut yourself a little bit of slack. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.